<laughs> okay. All right, good morning, students. Today we're working on solving linear equations, but we're going to also not only find one solution, as you've been previously doing, we're going to also find some equations that have no solutions or many solutions. So here you have three examples. Your examples of letting you know what's one solution, no solution, or many solution is right here at the top. So I'm going to give you a minute to copy this down, please. One solution. When your x equals one number, that's what is one solution. But when you have no solution, it's because one side of the equation does not equal the other side of the equation. So that's when you have no solutions. Therefore, when you see that A equals B, and we know that A does not equal B, it's no solutions. So remember our previous lesson, we were talking about balancing equations. Mm -hmm. This has to show a balance. Many solution definitely shows a balance. It is when this side of the equation equals this side of the equation based on your actual x um, value that you found. So that gives you infinitely many solutions, okay? So we're gonna practice solving each one of these. Now you all have already experienced finding one solution, we're working on that. And as you can see, we have three equations, but let's look at the first one. We have seven x minus three equals five x plus five. You have that on your sheet, everyone should be on that first column. We're gonna talk about properties of equality. Basically, we're gonna solve this. And the reason why it says properties of inequalities, of equality, excuse me, is because one of the properties we've been working on that you had to use to solve for one variable. Ms. Oswald, do you think you know, remember one of those properties that we use when we see parentheses sometimes? And it begins with the D? Distributed. The distributed property, that is a property of equality. We'll be using that sometimes. Right now, we don't have any parentheses, do we? No. So therefore, we won't use that one. So we also use some other properties. If we see that, and I think, um, Sonny, you probably see some. What do you notice about this? Any similarities on this side and that side of the equation? They Anything that looks the same? They both have constants. They both have constants. Very good. What else do they have? Uh, variables. Variables. The, are the variables the same? Yep. So whenever we're solving for one solution, we always want to isolate the variable. So we want this variable x to be on one of those sides, correct? So what am I going to do? And excuse my hand, right? What am I going to do to get these x's on maybe the left side? So if you like to have x on the left side, what do I need to do? Yes, sir. Um, you can subtract five x from both sides. Okay, we're gonna subtract five x from both sides. So that's what I'm going to do here. Thank you so much. And when I subtract them, they cancel each other out on one side, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that's a property that we just used. Who thinks they know what that property is? To help you in your notebooks, but if you can't remember, I'm gonna give you a little hint. It begins with an I. Some of y'all like to say, oh, we performed something, we did something. It's not isolation. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the deal. You all learned that addition is the opposite of subtraction, correct? In math terminology, we use another word for that. If you forget, because I know you're just learning, it's called the inverse property. We did the inverse of addition, which is basically subtraction. If you want to say the subtraction property, that is fine, okay? We can definitely do that. So we're going to continue to practice those inverses. So as we subtract 5x from both sides, what is 7x minus 5x? 2, 2, 7x minus 5x is 2x. 2x, very good. Always keep your variable. So we bring out our negative, our minus 3, I should say. Now, what is the next thing we need to do? Yes. Sorry, it's a 5 on the other side, not a 3. It's a 5 on the other side? Do you want to Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. All right. Let's Sometimes I make mistakes. Thank you so much. Now, what do we need to do this time? We need to do the inverse operation. I'm of pause our right there, right? Oh, that could be a good conversation, as okay. because I want you to know. Mm -hmm. You think? Are you talking too much right now? Yes. You caught it, right? No, you talking a little bit too much, right? It's okay. It's that ministry. It's that. It's the. So it could be a good time. Hey, I want now you and your partner to finish it, and then let's discuss afterwards. Okay. 
So right. then when they're doing it, it gives us more to talk about and right. then they can lead the conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's right. let's run it. Let's run that way. All right. Talk. Go ahead and talk with you. So who thinks so how would I do that? I would just say. So you would say at this point now we have two x minus three equals five. Is the x is do we have the variable isolated yet? Boom. That's yeah. a probing question, right? And it's yeah. like no. Yeah. Now you're gonna turn and talk with your um team, your partner, and you're going to try now to use the inverse operation to isolate. Yes, As okay. I come around, I should see you using the inverse operation. Mm -hmm. Give them time, and then you come back up. Sounds good. There you go. Sounds good. <laughs> no, put it so, your way. Put it your way. Put it your way. <laughs> so as we see, we have two x minus three equals five. Is the x has the x been isolated yet? No. no. All right. So I want you and your partner to turn and talk on how to continue to isolate that variable x. When I walk around, I should see you using one of the inverse operations to isolate that x. Yes, ma'am. Did we already review what isolate means? What yes. does isolate mean? Isolate means from your previous lessons. We mm -hmm. always want X to be on the side by itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the inverse operations that have to be formed to move everything that's with X on the other side of the equation, meaning mm -hmm. the equal side. Good okay. job. I like so that. I like let's that. continue on. So I'm going to walk around and talk. And I hope now we'll see someone's um, solution on their paper. So, and mind you that this is connected to our so, warm up because remember we had a warm up when we saw. One variable was on one side of the equation. Mm -hmm. So I one. noticed that there are like terms still over here with three, negative three and five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can, if we were gonna do the inverse operation or the subtraction, or we would do the addition for this because it is a subtraction. So we can add three to both sides to get two x plus equals eight. Mm -hmm. And then from there, in order to isolate the variable, we can divide each side uh, by two. Mm -hmm. I like what I'm seeing. I see the properties being used, the inverses. Did you oh, want to, did you and want to Mr. Osborne got that, so it, ch it checks out. He's our check right there. Yeah, so Amazing. Oh, wow. yeah, awesome. yeah. Who would like to share out what you did? Can you share out what you did, please? Because some students may not have done it correctly, so we want to make sure that everyone gets on board. Mm -hmm. What inverse properties did we use? The first one that you used, what did you do? Yes. Um, so uh, my classmate, Ms. Gallister, she mentioned um, using inverse, uh, pro I'm sorry, inverse, inverse property, property, specifically addition. Yes, specifically addition uh, in order to isolate our variable mm -hmm. uh, of 2x. Uh, and then how we did that was we added 3 to each side, which canceled out the, the negative 3. And then that 5 turned into 8. So now we have 2x equals 8. All right. And then it was, and was there another one? Because x is still not isolated. So, mm -hmm. Mr. Osborne, what did you have Because I walked through and I saw some great work there. Yeah, mm. so, so the inverse of 2x, I mean, the, the prop, well, the, the method of 2x is multiplication. Gotcha. Right? So I would do the inverse of that on both sides, which is division. So I would divide 2 on both sides. Oh, it's x by itself now? Yeah. 